In this video, I'm going to talk about how to create a PDF and an interactive PDF from within Adobe InDesign. Now, uh, I did cover how to save a PDF rather extensively in Illustrator, so I am not going to go into nearly as much detail on this video, at least relative to saving a regular PDF. So you may want to consider re-watching that movie again to help you uh, better understand the different settings and the benefits and detriments of those different settings. But I will go ahead and show you how to save a regular PDF here in InDesign because uh, the path to it is a little bit different and the settings are a little bit different. This is just a regular print file and you'll recognize this from our master pages demo. So it has a cover and a back cover and then facing pages or spreads. So I'm going to go up to the file menu and pull down to export. You'll see the keystroke for this is command E or control E. And then when this save window comes up or export window comes up, at the bottom you will see format. And currently this is set to PDF print because that's the last thing I exported. But if I drop down this menu, you'll see there are other choices. But we're just gonna concern ourselves with these two here in this video. So I am gonna keep this as a print PDF. And uh, then I am going to click save. And that will bring up this window here. Now I'm going to do a rather quick save on this one because the reason I have this file open is to mainly talk about which pages you are going to export. So I'm just going to leave the preset at high quality print for this and then I'm just going to say export all pages. And this is very important. Very. In this case, I want to export spreads. If I didn't click that, then these facing pages would end up not being facing. They would just be eight individual pages. Ah! Whereas now it will be the front cover and then three spreads and then the back cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and just export this. And then I'm going to go into the finder window here. And uh, there is master pages PDF open that up and this will open it up in preview and you can see there is the front cover and then here is a spread here is another spread here's another spread and then there is the single back cover this has a little more to it uh, in that it has copy and several different visuals and in this I wanted to talk more specifically about the settings to get the best results for your for your pictures in here and so back to the file menu, back to export. And again, format will be PDF print. And then all the pages, uh, there is only one page, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, now over here, you do have control over how the file will open. If you leave it at default, what that means is whatever settings the viewer has their PDF uh, reading program set to is what yours will open up in. So I'm gonna say that's fine for this one. I'll do something different when we get to the interactive PDF. <coughs> we don't need to create separate PDF files from each of the different pages. I don't want to control um, whether they see it in full screen mode. Uh, I am gonna go ahead and view the PDF after exporting. So let's see, optimize fast web view, good. And I do like to embed page thumbnails so those thumbnails travel with the file. And then this down here is you'll see you can have some interactive elements. And so if you set up what are called bookmarks, which are basically links to different pages or hyperlinks, which we covered in an earlier video, then you can turn those on. I am gonna take you to one other page here and that is compression. So again, I'm using the high quality print setting, which if you remember from the Illustrator video, that's a nice way to get a high quality file, but still get a lot of compression so your file size isn't too big. But I'd like to make this even a little bit smaller. So I like to make PDFs that can, be, that can look very good on screen, but also can be printed and, and still look very good. And there's a double benefit to this and that is that screen resolution is 72, but with all the high resolution monitors out there, including the one you're probably looking at this video on, there's like twice as many pixels. And so if you save it at 72, when it shows up on screen at full size, it actually doesn't look very good. 
because system software is built into it to double the size if it's a high resolution monitor. And so I always save my PDFs at around 150 pixels per inch. And so I'm gonna change that in here in the compression. So it doesn't need to be 300, that's a little bit of overkill, but I do want it to be 150. And then I'm gonna change this for images above 150 and then come down here to grayscale and do the same settings. And then for monochrome, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that alone. And then finally, I am just going to click export. Once it is done, it will automatically open up the PDF. So let me shrink this down a bit so you can see it better. So you'll see the images all look very good, nice and clean, the type looks great. And so I'm gonna stop there with saving print PDFs. Uh, you should be pretty well versed in that already. I'm gonna close that bad boy. And finally, this brings us to the interactive PDF. And so what I've done in here is I have created a link that is attached to this heading. So I'll show you the hyperlinks window that is going to a YouTube web page. And then I've also embedded a video in here. Now I'm not gonna cover how to do that in this video. That will be covered in another video. So how do I save this so that I can see all of this in action? I don't know. Well, same process, go to export. And this time, instead of format for print, I'm gonna format for interactive. And that title is fine. And this window is different as it should be because it's a different type of PDF. So all the pages, yep, and export them as pages, that's good. Don't need separate files. Now down here, you, I do want to control the viewer's experience. So Master. I'm gonna say view this as a single page as opposed to scrolling pages. And then I want the view to be fit in page. So however big their window is, is kind of how big this will open. And that's mainly so it will look good when I show it to you in this video. Um, I don't need full screen mode, and I am not gonna view after exporting, and I'll explain that in a minute. And then all of this other stuff is just fine, uh, but the important thing is right here, forms and media, by default, include all has been checked. If it's not, then make sure you check it because those are the interactive elements. And so if you don't check that, then some or all of your interactive elements won't function. For instance, your video might not play. Totally for sure. Uh, compression, uh, a little simpler window here, but again, I wanna show you that I basically choose double the resolution. So I go to 144 instead of 72. Now this isn't intended to be printed, but it could be printed and still look pretty good. But again, this is because of those high resolution monitors. I'm just putting in twice as many pixels so that my pictures look good, because otherwise they'll look kind of crummy if I do 72 PPI. Uh, the default for this is to use what's called lossy JPEG. Uh, you may have wondered in the past what JPEG 2000 is. That just means it doesn't throw away information in the image, but it also really bloats your file. So I tend to choose the regular JPEG, but then I set the quality to high. And finally, export. And then this window comes up. And I don't want you to be scared by this, but often, unless you specifically go in and address this, your InDesign files are gonna be CMYK color mode. So when you're making an interactive PDF, meaning that it's meant to be viewed on screen, well, the color format for that is RGB. And it's saying, whoa, wait a minute, pal. Um, you've got a CMYK document and you're saving this in RGB just kind of know that some things could happen. And the truth is, you're really not gonna see any difference uh, because CMYK has a more limited color spectrum, and so it translates to RGB just fine. So it's gonna be rare that you'll see a color shift, but it is possible. And so I typically would check don't show again, but go ahead and click okay, and then that will continue the exporting process. Now, let me go back to finder window here and get to that PDF. So why did I not have it automatically open when it exported? Well, because my default PDF preview program is the program called Preview. It's built into the Apple system. And I like that PDF reader uh, for almost everything. But there is a problem. If I double click on this now, and I'm just gonna scroll this up, 
This video should have started playing the minute the page loaded. I can click till I'm blue in the face and nothing is gonna happen. Now, the hypertext link will work. I'll click on that when we get to the next screen, but videos won't play. And so really you're kind of stuck. If you want to see the videos and your interactivity work completely, then you really need to open it in either Adobe Reader, so I'm gonna right click on this, or Adobe Acrobat Pro, which is this experience will be exactly the same. So I'm gonna choose Acrobat Pro. And so here we go. So you'll see I got the little play bar and everything, and now I can play the video. We are gonna use styles to make this look like this. I included that because that's some of my best work. Thank you. Uh, now up here, this is a hypertext link. So if I click on this, it will take me over to my uh, web page, And uh, it's a very cute video on funny things that pigs do. Love that video. That's pretty much it for the demo. And so, I know I say this in every video, but it is shocking how easy all of this stuff is. Yes, dear. The trick is to understand the basic concepts, and once you do, then you can go in and mess with all those settings and know exactly what you're gonna get and why you are changing those various settings. But until you do, just refer to these videos, and then obviously ask us questions uh, when we're in class.